Hey guys, Linda Montgomery here with Davis Road Designs. Welcome to my channel. So today I am going to show you how I decoupage this really, really difficult piece. Um, but I learned a lot and I want to share that with you guys. So I took this little cabinet and turned it into a really cool statement piece. And I used decoupage paper to do it. And I knew that this paper was going to rip and tear. There's just no way to take that paper and put it in all the creases and all the little nuances of this cabinet without it doing that. So um, I started out one way and I just kept plugging away at it and I figured out a really cool way to get this taken care of. I'm gonna share that with you today. I'm not gonna go a lot into my paint blending techniques because I do that on a different video. This is mainly about how I decoupage this piece. As you can see here, prime example of one of the areas that the paper uh, ripped and how I fixed it. So let's get into it. So these little knobs were on here uh, with wooden dowels, so they just needed to be cut off. So that is what I did here. There you go. And then I used a little sander and I just uh, smoothed it out a little bit. I am going to be painting and decoupaging over this so it wasn't a big deal, but just wanted to get that smooth there. Uh, you can see the top of this project, it's not, it's not great. This cabinet really isn't a super great cabinet. It's just cute. It was a lightweight piece and I thought it'd be a really fun little statement piece for somebody. So I painted the whole thing uh, with a light gray just to give it uh, some paint in the background to work with. Um, and so I chose just a light gray. I thought it kind of went with everything. Here I am placing my decoupage paper. This decoupage paper is by Whimsical Designs and I love it. I wanted to make sure that the eyes on this were not in some weird funky spot, right? I didn't want them getting cut or have weird creases and look weird. So I measured that out just by placing it. Then I, uh, I misted my paper here a little bit because it'll give it a little bit of a stretch. And that is my Dixie Belle Satin Clear Coat. And that's what I use for my decoupage medium. I'm gonna start in the middle of this piece so that I make sure that I have it centered and where I want it. Um, I take a roll of Saran Wrap and I use that to help adhere the paper down. It really helps because once that paper gets damp, if you're using your fig fingers, excuse me, to manipulate it, it just, um, it causes a lot of rips and tears and headaches. So I got the middle part done and there I was spraying it again. I thought maybe if I could get the paper to stretch a little more, it would be easier to go over the, the surface So I worked in little sections, little by little. And um, actually sometimes what I would do is work on a section, I would let that completely dry overnight and then I'd come back and do a little more. Um, I actually worked on this cabinet for quite a while um, and I would let it sit in between and fully dry. So that was part of how I was figuring this out. Uh, right here I thought, you know what, I am gonna cut certain areas that show tension and help to relieve the tension rather than just having the paper rip. So I did that where it was dry. Um, I mean, where my paper wasn't wet yet. And that really seemed to help. Like I said, I, I like to just jump in and learn as I go. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. That's why I'm sharing this with you. I didn't see anybody out there doing a piece quite as crazy as this. Um, I've been decoupaging for quite a few years and it was a really, really good challenge and I learned a lot. So here I am um, just kind of cutting some different areas to relieve some of that pressure. And along the bottom as well. All right, here's my arm in the way. So at this point, I decided I really wanted that portion with the, the eyes to be nice and smooth. So I actually 
cut that piece out so I could just adhere that and not worry about trying to get it up and over uh, the rest of the ridge on the right hand side. And this seemed to help a lot. I did the same thing on the left hand side so that those uh, pieces would lay really nice and flat. It worked great actually. Saran wrap is your best friend doing this. It worked amazing. I don't think have any areas on this whole thing that had any air bubbles or anything. It laid really flat. So I just work section a little section at a time, smoothing it out, going from the middle, working my way out. That way, any air bubbles that happen to be in there could just get pushed right on out to the edges. Worked terrific. So I just concentrate one thing at a time, one little section at a time. I did the same thing at the top. I cut that little section out and then adhered that down because it was a large flat section and I knew that that would be the best. Okay, so see all these little rips and tears along the edge? I thought, not a big deal. I'm just going to paint it in. That's no, no problem. So I get over here to the right-hand side and I decide I'm going to take the paper uh, to the edge and then over. There's about an inch where... Um, I'm going to go over the edge with it as well. This is where I start coming up with an idea here pretty quick. So I go over the edge and adhere that down. You'll see that just here in a second. So that's where we're at. See, it's kind of got a rip and tear there. So here's the edge of it. I'm going to go ahead and put that down and then I'm going to have some extra material left over um, once that's adhered down. So soon after this is where I figure this out. See that tear right there? I thought, what if I took a little bit of that extra paper that I have that I took off the side and put it over that? How would that work? Check that out. You can't even see it. So that's when I came up with the plan. You know what? I am going to order another one of these prints. And it's a nice lightweight uh, decoupage paper. So when you adhere it, it just kind of blends in. So that's where I came up with my idea to fix this. See those tears? Yes, I could paint them, but instead I decided to get another sheet of the paper. So what I did was very tedious, but it worked really well, is I would put the paper up there, kind of figure out exactly what section of the paper I needed to cut out, and I would cut out a little strip, and then I would hear, adhere it down. And it took a while, but it worked great. I've never seen anybody do that before, that is why I'm sharing it with you guys. I thought, man, this is a great way to be able to cover up those types of things. There are some spots where I do go in and do some painting, and I'll show you that as well. Uh, but when, with so many rips and tears, I really wanted to um, see if I could make this look a little better. Same thing again up here. I cut it. I cut it to fit in there. And then um, I went in with my satin clear coat and adhered it down. And I am really, really happy with the results of this. So it did take time. It was tedious. But the end result was really worth it. And I would do it the same way again if I had to, or if I have another piece that um, is really hard to take care of and if there's a lot of rips and tears. You know, if it was only a, a couple, it would have been one thing, but so much of this piece would have been that way that I just, I knew there had to be a better way. And when you look at the piece now when it's finished, 
you can't even tell. You would never know that there was a bunch of little pieces in there. Uh, oh, and one other thing. I didn't rip the paper. A lot of times, you know, when you're doing decoupage, you like to rip the edge. I didn't because most of this piece is darker. And if you would have ripped the edge, it would show uh, the white ripped edge and that would not have helped. All right, so I want to start blending this in the top in. I, you we're looking at this upside down, but so I went to my paint, definitely some of this paint blue, maybe a little bit of this dusty blue. Um, I see little bits of green here, which uh, this is kudzu. I know if I put that really light, it's gonna look like that. Um, this is some manatee gray. It's got quite a bit of blue to it, which um, when you're looking at this paper, it actually does have quite a blue hue. Um, as I come over here, I actually see kind of some yellows and browns. I'm going to use this pine cone color um, up in here. And then I got some Mason Dixon gray. It's still a little blue. And I will probably end up having to add um, a little bit of black in there. But that's uh, kind of how I pick my colors. I just, I know that I can make them look lighter than what they are in um, my container. So that's what I start with. Now I am going to take this paint that I mixed up with sea spray. See all the texture? See how thick that is? So now what I'm going to do is I am just going to start pouncing this really thick texture because I'm going to bring it in over this line here. Um, and this is just my base, but this is the haint blue. So I'm just going to start with that. And um, once that gets that texture gets dry, then I'm going to bring in my other colors. But that's my plan so that's what i'm going to start with so as you can see i got most of this done but you just do that with a brush that's pretty rugged and rough and you just kind of you're just gonna pop it up and down you don't want to go side to side you just want to let those little peaks stick up so what that helps to do it helps to blend in the edge of my paper so right here you can see, um, you can see this right here kind of sticking up. The paper got wet, not a big deal. Once the paint dries, that will go back down. So here's where we are on the so far, moving right along. Okay, right here, um, I decided I didn't feel like cutting any strips at the time and I thought the green area would be good to blend in. So I grabbed my brush and a couple different colors of green. I just start kind of pouncing them in. I use my fingers a lot when I paint. It's great to blend in. It's great to smooth things out or um, maybe even remove a little bit of the color. It just kind of pounces it together. Um, as you see here, I'm kind of pushing it and then I'm going to back out and then you'll see you don't even see it. Like, look at that. It blends right in. You can't even see anything. So that's another way you can do this. Um, and let's see, so the other side of the project, because I had an extra piece of paper, I decided to um, do that. This piece here with this raven is actually, it's also by Whimsy Cal Designs, and I will have um, that put in the notes where you can go and click on that if you would like to go and buy some of their amazing paper. Um, and so I like that for the other side. The top, the top of this thing was a mess. It had rings on it, it had all sorts of stuff. So I painted it with a lighter color. And here, I'm just going over it with some different browns. I'm spraying it. And then I take this tool and pull off some of the paint so that it actually makes it look like wood grain. So if it's if you pull that, you, you like to make uh, a rocking motion to give it that um, texture. If it doesn't work, just go back over it. And if you really don't like it, you can just paint over it real quick and then go back over it again. But I just kept going over it, rocking it back and forth until I got the look I wanted. And then I took a brush and went over it, just kind of smoothed it out. And so this is going to be the base for putting my gel stain on. That way it'll just look like it's actual um, some nicer pieces of wood. So I use General Finishes uh, Java Gel Stain. I go to that a lot. 
I wiped it on and check that out. So the top of this looks great now. You don't have any more rings or anything else. This is my finished piece. I am so happy with this. There's the other side with the raven and the other side with that extra paper I had left over. Thanks for watching. I hope that you learned something new today about decoupaging. Uh, you can always email me with any questions. I'm happy to help. There's going to be some links if you'd like to find some Whimsical paper. And uh, let me know if you have any questions. I appreciate you watching. Give me a like and follow if you would. Have a great day.